Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's webinar. We'll give everyone a few moments just to come in and settle in. Welcome again, everyone, to tonight's webinar titled PPO Mastery, Credentialing Your Startup for Optimal Reimbursement. My name is Shirley, and I will be your moderator this evening. I'm so excited to welcome Schaefer Kade. She's the sales coordinator at Unitas, who will talk about the steps to take to negotiate your reimbursements before becoming a network. Before we get started, I'd love to take a moment to go over some quick housekeeping. If you have any questions, we ask that you please email them to webinars at henryshine.com. That's W-E-B-I-N for Nancy, A-R-S for Sam, at henryshine.com. I'll also be dropping the email address in our chat box below. CE is not available for this webinar tonight. And just a heads up that we will be sending out this recording in the next week or so. Shay, welcome and thank you for being with us tonight. I'll pass it over to you now. Awesome, thank you so much for having me. Um, so today we're gonna talk about how to credential with the PPOs on the very highest reimbursements that you can. So. I always tell uh, new practice owners, whether you're a new practice owner or you're acquiring a second or third or fourth practice, um, why not give yourself a raise to start out, right? You have such an amazing opportunity to negotiate what you're actually being paid before you sign those contracts. And so that's what we're going to talk about today is how to give yourself a raise. Um, how to actually increase what you're going to be reimbursed from the insurance companies before you sign those contracts. So um, again, my name is Shay. Um, this is my email, shay.forcade at unitasdental.com. If you have any specific questions at the end of this webinar, feel free to just reach out to me directly um, and I can always answer those for you. Um, and of course, we will also have a, a place at the end um, where you can um, sign on and schedule a consultation with us. Our consultations are always free um, if you want to ask some more specific questions and, and have, have a consultation. So um, just a little intro to Unitas if you've never heard of us. We have been working with dentists since 2011. Um, so we've worked with thousands of practices in all 50 states. We represent over 1,800 practices currently. I think it's actually maybe over 1,900 at this point. Um, our mother office is located in Mesa, Arizona. I actually live in Texas, and we do have, you know, co um, consultants all over the U.S., uh, over 100 insurance experts on our team. So that's just a little background to us and what we do. Um, what we'll cover today, of course, we're going to talk about how to get on those higher reimbursements. Um, before you credential with the PPOs. So three very important topics. Number one, how to competitively price your office fees for your area. This is really going to set the stage for negotiations. Uh, number two, how to ensure that you're credentialed with the right PPOs. And then number three, how to maximize profits and receive high reimbursements, which is all what we're looking to do, right? So Without further ado, if you want to download our step-by-step -step framework of this um, credentialing and negotiations, go to www.ppoguide.com slash cred dash guide. Um, and there you can download our step-by-step -step framework that we're going to be talking about today. So um, I will tell you from speaking with, you know, hundreds and hundreds of offices every month, um, this is um, correct in that your profitability is really, for some reason, at the bottom of the list um, when people are getting a new practice, either build or an acquisition. Um, they're so worried about all these things first, um, and then they worry about credentialing with insurance last. And that's really the wrong way to do things. Um, that's going to set you up for failure, just being honest. Um, in reality, you want to make sure that you have a plan for your insurance and what they're going to pay you before you worry about all this other stuff, creating, you know, business plan, legal entity, financing, right location, all of that, of course, is important, right? Um, but ultimately, you need to start being proactive about understanding how to increase your reimbursements now, 
Um, you can always um, down the line, right? Worry about other things, the wallpaper, the carpet, what have you. Um, but ultimately, you need to make sure that you're actually able to afford um, this new practice that you're taking on, right? Which is a massive accomplishment, but it can be a sinking ship very quickly if you're not actually being paid um, with incongruence to um, your cost of doing business, right? So that's my soapbox for the evening. Um, profitability should not be the very last thing that you think about, right? Um, so um, number one, how to competitively price your office fees for your area. So we're going to talk about the impact of billing competitive office fees, how to find out what other practices in your area are charging for dentistry, and how to decide what you should charge for your office fees. So insurance companies will set their fee schedules based on data from Fair Health, which is collected from the UCR's dentists submit on their claims. So there is a myth um, that many dentists will say of, well, it doesn't matter what I submit for my UCRs. Well, it really does matter. It is going to affect the industry. And there's a good quote, a rising tide raises all ships. And that's basically to state that if everyone submits very low UCRs, you're going to keep that reimbursement rate low, right? And if everyone does start to raise them, then now we're showing a different price point to the insurance companies because, of course, that's going to be your starting point for any discount, which is what a PPO would offer you, right? Is it all based on a discount on your UCR? So very important first step here. Um, how to find out what other practices in your area charge. So there are percentile based analysis um, tools that are available to you. Um, I highly recommend doing this. They're very inexpensive. Both Unitas and Henry Shine provide these analysis tools. We do typically advise to set your office fees at the 80th percentile, just again, to make sure that you are going to be competitive with your area. Um, we also want to recommend to not worry about establishing a perfect fee for all 9,000 codes. It's really not necessary. You just want to focus on those codes um, that are going to be most important to your practice. So we recommend that you create a spreadsheet with about 20 to 35 codes. Of course, will depend based on your specialty um, and then enter your selected office UCRs there. Of course, you always want to consider technology you're going to use, equipment and materials when you're focusing on these top grossing codes. So your office UCR should be at least 20 to 30 percent above your highest paying PPO fee schedule, because as most of you know, um, whether it's the UCR or the reimbursement, the insurance company will always pay on the lower of the two, right? Um, you want to finalize those UCRs as early as possible so then you can compare the amounts you'll be charging versus the fees offered by the insurance companies. Um, some insurance copies, companies will require a copy of your UCRs when you're applying for in-network participation, so just keep that in mind. There are many entry points here to which the UCRs are going to be important for your reimbursements. So if you missed it the first time, we do offer a step-by-step -step breakdown of this exact credentialing framework. You want to go to www.ppoguide.com slash cred dash guide and everything we're going to be talking about today is going to be included in that guide so point number two how to ensure that you are credentialed with the right ppos um, number one we're going to look at the purpose of insurance participation um, b how conducting market research can help with selecting the right ppos and with marketing um, why it is helpful to look at your competition um, and then lastly, who are the major PPO insurance companies in the U.S.? And we're going to provide you with a list of those today. So um, purpose of insurance participation. So why should I be in network, right? Um, in reality, you know, you're going to be in the preferred provider directory, which is what everyone wants. You want patient traffic. You want those patients calling and saying, hey, I want to schedule with you, right? You're going to have improved patient acquisition, improve patient retention, and increase treatment plan acceptance, right? Cons to in-network participation are that you are agreeing to accept a discounted fee for your services. So to our point in case for the whole webinar today, um, why not accept the smallest discount off your fees that you can, right? 
Um, and of course, the discounted rate is going to be dictated by the insurance company. So don't make the mistake of just accepting those fees as is. You want to be proactive and get those rates as best as possible before you join the network. So uh, how conducting market research can help with picking the right PPOs and with marketing. So number one, you want to identify the largest employer surrounding your office. Number two, determine which insurance company their dental benefits are administered through. You can just pick up the phone or send an email, um, contact their HR department. They'll typically um, just give you that information. Um, you want to consider contracting with these insurance companies so you can capitalize on that market. And of course, consider utilizing this information as part of your marketing efforts as well. Um, so this is just an example of a local market analysis report. This is um, similar to what Unitas would provide. So we offer the company names on the left. We do a little spreadsheet with the address, the phone number, and the dental benefits that they provide to their employers. So this is something that you could do on your own. Again, if you just pick up the phone and call, um, most companies are willing to give you that information. So why is it helpful to look at your competition? Um, number one, you want to identify your nearest competitor practices. You want to review their websites for insurance participation. It is typically just going to be listed on their website as to who they're in network with. You can also review the PPO directories too. That's a good way to figure out their participation. Then you want to compile a list of your findings for each practice, match their participation where necessary, or and or identify any insurance companies that they're not with and consider filling that gap. That's definitely a great strategy um, as well. So those are just some tips about looking at competition um, and bridging that gap between who should I actually join um, in my area. So this is a list of major insurance companies. Um, many of them include Aetna, Emeritus, Anthem, Blue Cross, Carrington, Cigna Connection, also known as GIHA. There's Delta PPO, Delta Premier, Dentamax, Dental Network of America, First Dental Health, Guardian, Humana, Maverist, also known as Zealous or Stratos. There's MetLife, Principal, Sun Life, DHA or Assurant. There's Premier Dental Grip, United Concordia, and United Healthcare. So feel free to take a picture of this. Um, save it for a rainy day. Um, so if you want to download the step-by-step -step framework of what we're going over today, um, go to www.ppoguide.com uh, slash cred dash guide. So uh, number three, how to maximize profits and receive high PPO reimbursements. So we're going to go over the most common mistakes new practices make and how to avoid them. Uh, number two, we're going to ensure that your PPO fees or how to ensure your PPO fees are competitive for your area. And then number three, how to minimize the risks and maximize the benefits of PPO participation. How you participate with PPO is arguably the most important thing that you'll do. Um, there's so many different ways to join a PPO and it used to be so um, straightforward and now it's gotten very convoluted, right? So we'll kind of break down the different ways for you here in just a minute. So um, most common mistakes, um, I get this one all the time, even after I warn people, believe it or not, um, believing that fees can be negotiated after credentialing. It's not true. You sign that contract, you sign on the dotted line, you are agreeing to that rate, okay? You have to wait a full two years before you can renegotiate. So that's two years of possibly being in the red for your brand new business because you accepted a fee that's actually paying you less than your cost of materials, cost of paying employees, and your overhead. And that's really terrifying. Um, I'm kind of sweating right now thinking about it, how many dentists are going into this situation, setting themselves up for failure, right? Um, so... Submitting an A credentialing application is telling the insurance company that you're agreeing to join their network and accepting their discounted reimbursement rate. So when you submit the application without reviewing the fee schedule, they are just going to assign a generic fee schedule to your practice, which is not the way to go. Um, and like I said, once assigned, most fee schedules are not negotiable for about 24 months. So that is a long time. Um, again, you know, you have lots of new costs as a new business owner. Um, this really is a small investment for you to 
negotiate your fees ahead of time. Make sure that you're doing it right from the get go rather than having to backpedal years later. So um, number two, most common mistake, being unaware that plan selections correspond with reimbursement. This is a big one. All the time I see people that sign up with a plan and they're not realizing that they're with a very low paying uh, part of the plan instead of a higher paying one. That's something you definitely want to pay attention to. So um, plan selections will correspond with fee schedules and different pay bases. So for example, Delta Premier versus Delta PPO, Cigna DPPO Advantage versus Cigna DPPO, Carrington Platinum versus Carrington Care, and I could name, you know, dozens of other examples, but basically just understand how you're joining the network and which patient base you're a part of, because ultimately each patient base will probably have a different fee schedule. And if you just sign it off on a generic application, they're probably going to assign you to many fee schedules, which means you're probably going to be paid on the lowest. So just always keep that in mind. Education is power. Knowledge is power. If you can just pay attention to those small details in the in the beginning, uh, that's going to increase what you're being paid um, by the insurance company substantially. So um, being unaware of different participation types. This is probably the biggest one. Um, it is a little bit of a headache, especially for you new um, practice owners. Because you're used to just just going to work being a dentist and not having to worry about the insurance side but it is a whole different world and there's you know so many different ways that you can be in network with a plan and ultimately again knowledge is power if you can understand how you should join a network that's going to get you those higher reimbursements right out of the gate so there's multiple different ways you can participate with a PPO. It's not like how it used to be. I want to join MetLife and I sign up with MetLife. Yes, that's correct, of course. But MetLife also has many other industry relationships. Um, and of course, pretty much all PPOs do. Um, besides Delta, Delta typically does not have um, other relationships in the industry. But participation type number one would be a direct contract. So a direct contract is just like what you think of. I want to sign up with MetLife and I sign up with their fee schedule and that's how I get paid, right? On the MetLife fees that I agreed to or maybe didn't even look at but agreed to just blindly, right? Um, second way to participate is one PPO to another. So for example, when you sign a contract, it does state in the contract that this PPO can form a relationship with whomever they want. So many people will say, oh, I, I never agreed to this. Well, you did agree to it. It's in the contract. Um, the PPOs have arrangements with other PPOs and that's just how it works. So when you sign up with a PPO, most likely you probably will get some other PPOs attached onto that fee schedule. And that's just kind of how it works. And for example, if you never sign a direct contract with a company, they're going to actually see when you submit the claim to that company, number one, we don't have a direct contract. Number two, who are all the relationships that we have in this office? And then number three, they're going to assign you on the lowest paying fee schedule. So yes, this there is a systematic issue here. Um, and again, knowledge is power. If you can understand this, then you can really get to the bottom of how you should join a network, right? Um, the third way to participate is umbrella networking. So umbrella networks, the biggest ones would include Carrington, there's Zealous, Connection, there's Dentamax, First Dental Health, Premier Dental Group, um, Diversified over um, in our Nevada area and some surrounding areas. So those are really the biggest ones. Um, umbrella networks are not all created equal. Some of them pay awesome. Some of them pay horribly. Again, just paying attention to those reimbursements is so crucial. And when you join an umbrella network, you're um, agreeing to the PPOs underneath the umbrella network. So umbrella networks are not PPOs. They're third parties and they have relationships with the PPOs, but they provide a fee schedule that's going to be honored for those PPOs that fall underneath it. And again, just like the last um, example, 
if you never signed a direct contract with a PPO, and let's say that you sign up with multiple umbrellas, they're always going to pay you on the lowest umbrella company, right? So that's just how the insurance companies are set up. So um, how to ensure your PPO fees are competitive for your area? You want to, number one, call provider relations, ask for an application packet and a fee schedule proposal. Then you want to create a spreadsheet with key procedures for your practice. Compare your UCRs against the PPO fees. Then you want to consider the best participation type for maximum reimbursement, not just the PPO fee schedule. Because yes, the PPO will provide you with a fee schedule, but it may not be the most financially advantageous for you to actually sign up with that PPO directly. So just always keep that in mind. Relationships are very key, um, especially when it comes to your reimbursement rates. So this is just an example of a participation uh, analysis report that we would provide you with. So just as an example, um, Guardian, of course, is a major PPO many of you will sign up with. Um, in this example, Guardian offered 41% of your UCR. Zealous is an umbrella company. They offered 63%. So Zealous and Guardian do have a relationship. So just as one example, you could participate with Guardian through the Zealous umbrella and of course, that's going to be a higher reimbursement rate than if you sign up with Guardian directly. So we were able to um, see this data here again by comparing your top grossing codes um, um, against your UCRs. And then we compare side by side of what Guardian is offering versus what Zealous is offering. Um, you always want to make sure that um, the PPOs and umbrella companies are um, going to be a good match in your state and that they work in real time, right? Um, just because you get a pair list from an umbrella company doesn't necessarily mean that that relationship is either live in the industry or that it's applicable in your state. So that's where working with an expert like Unitas is going to come into play because yes, on paper, um, something may say, you know, that this relationship works, but maybe it only works in certain states or maybe in your specific zip code, it doesn't work anymore or there's a certain caveat to it. So that's where it is very crucial that you work with an expert if you are trying to dial in and keep your reimbursements as as high as possible. So um, how to ensure your PPO fees are competitive, um, just carrying on. Um, remember, we don't want you to get locked into a low paying fee schedule, um, two years minimum period before negotiations are possible. So negotiate first and then credential is the name of the game. Um, Unitas has data to compare your offers to determine how competitive they are for your area. Um, when you're just doing this on your own, you don't really know, is this a good rate? Is this a bad rate? We work with thousands of offices every year. So we know, okay, what does this offer actually look like in comparison to what we've seen elsewhere? Um, and Unitas does have dedicated recruiters and high-level insurance contacts that many practices do not have access to, and we can negotiate on your behalf. Um, again, yes, you can do this on your own. Um, in reality, it does take a lot of experience and a higher-level understanding, um, and not to mention just calling provider relations um, many times is not as helpful as you want it to be. So, um, it's all who you know, right? Not only in dentistry, but in every industry out there. So uh, we do have those dedicated um, recruiters um, and representatives within the insurance companies that we work closely with. So it's really only to your benefit to work with, you know, with a company that has that kind of um, relationships that they've built over the years, because it can be really hard to um, to again understand the industry and number two um, negotiate as much as you as you want to or need to right so um, how to minimize risks and maximize benefits of PPO participation um, prioritize thinking about your PPO participation PPO participation sooner than later so the earlier that you start the better you always want to set your set yourself up for success as a new business owner. 
Um, you want to evaluate each insurance company's fee schedule before credentialing and consider the different participation options and develop a strategic participation plan, keeping in mind that a direct contract may not be the most profitable way to actually participate with that PPO. So um, don't rely on insurance participation for marketing. Um, submit your UCRs on claims, not your PPO fees to increase the likelihood of future negotiation success and plan to renegotiate in two years as well. You want to cast a wide net to maximize new patient potential and practice growth. You want to analyze your patient numbers and plans from the start, and then plan to reevaluate participation after one year. And of course, hire the experts as well. Um, yes, you could always do your taxes on your own, or you could hire a trusted accountant, right? And same with your PPO participation and your reimbursements. Just making a very small investment in your business allows you to give yourself a raise before you start your new your new venture, and that's super exciting. Uh, it definitely gets me excited. I feel like I have good karma in my life um, just from working here and from... Um, educating people and letting them know that, yes, you can make more money. You know, we have to live in an abundance mindset and you can make more from the get go. You don't have to wait down the road to negotiate, negotiate now, negotiate before you open the practice. And it's just going to open up so much more opportunities for you to meet those financial goals along the way. Right. So um, our practice start service includes so practice start. Um, it's going to be a specialized department, just like what it sounds for a new practice, so new build or an acquisition. So um, this is a specialized department if you're in that genre. We also have many other departments. If you're a pre-existing practice, we have a department for fee-for-service practices looking to add PPOs. We have credentialing. So we just have lots going on. We have big group um, uh, department as well. So Unitas has got all the bases covered when it comes to PPO negotiations. But practice start, um, if you're a new builder acquisition, this service includes an office fee report, your market analysis, of course, custom fee schedule collection and negotiations. Um, we then put all of the credentialing negotiations into our recommendations. Uh, we complete start to finish credentialing. We provide you with an in-house discount plan. Of course, you have access to our United's Library collection, and you have access to a dedicated representative for 12 months. Yes, this is a lengthy process to get in network. Um, that's another common misconception. People think they can just get in network overnight. Unfortunately, you can. It does take some time. It takes months and months to get in network. So you might as well be working with an expert, someone who has this streamlined, who understands the processes and who's very integrated into the system. So that's pretty much all I have for y'all today. Um, I highly recommend that you schedule a complimentary consultation with us. Um, go to unitushsd.com. Again, that's unitushsd.com. Uh, our consultations are always free and whether or not you're a new practice owner or you're considering buying a practice, um, if you have a pre-existing practice, um, of course, like I said earlier, we can always help you as well. We do have a variety of services. So thank you guys so much for having me and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Oh, Shay, that was awesome. Thank you so much. So informative, such great suggestions and next steps. Thank you for a wonderful presentation. Thank you. And thank you all. Yeah. Thank you all this evening for joining us tonight. Uh, we did record tonight's webinar, as I mentioned earlier, and we will email the recording out sometime in the next week. We'd love uh, to get your feedback also via our survey that will pop up on your screens shortly. Thank you all for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you on future webinars. Mm -hmm.